consistent, inept, insensitive, deceitful, and nepotistic government as we have witnessed under this government. Those state institutions, those state institutions, like the Bank of Ghana, the Minerals Commission, FEC, continued their investigations into the illegal deposit taking activities of men's gold. The executive arm of government, led by President Akufuadu himself, endorsed, advertised, and promoted the activities of the now defunct men's gold and its beleaguered CEO number one, thereby shoring up their legitimacy. This view, like I said earlier on, is supported by indisputable and incontrovertible evidence. Now, on evidence of state-led endorsement and promotion of men's gold, and I'm one. Ladies and gentlemen, although government knew at all times that men's gold and its CEO and I'm one were engaged in illegal business because the Bank of Ghana previously had issued notices to that effect, and in spite of the fact that they knew that men's gold and Nam1 were subject of investigations by the Central Bank of Ghana. On August the 26th, 2017, a private agency called Entrepreneurs Foundation of Ghana, at this Ghana's Business Quality Awards, organized under the auspices of the Ministry of Finance, bestowed on men's gold a quality business award. Wow. And ladies and gentlemen, you can see that award on the screen. Like I told you, this is a moment of truth. And so we will give you evidence of every single claim we make here, because it is nothing but a fact. And so, this is exactly. You see, the Ministry of Finance collaborated with a private entity called Entrepreneurs Foundation of Ghana, and bestowed on men's gold, which was a subject of investigation by the central bank, a quality award wow. in 2017. Immediately they came into office. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, the Ministry of Finance, which is headed by the cousin of the president, Ken Uforiata, in collaboration with the EFG, that's the Entrepreneurs Foundation Ghana, awarded Men's Gold as one of the best companies in the gold assaying and monumental coins industry. Therefore, it is ultimate hypocrisy for this same Ken Uvariata, whose ministry lured innocent citizens to invest in Men's Gold to turn around and insult the greedy customers as greedy people. I would like to inform Ken Uforiata that he's by far the greediest political figure in Ghana today. He has no moral authority, no moral high ground to label any citizen of Farm and Commerce Ghana as greedy. Ladies and gentlemen, if greed was ever a human being, his name would be Ken Uforiata. <laughs> Also, in spite of the fact that government knew at all times that number one was engaged in illegal business, on the 28th of April 2018, at the 8th Ghana Entrepreneurs and Corporate Executive Awards, organized here again by the Entrepreneurs Foundation of Ghana at the Moving Pick Ambassador Hotel, the Ministry of Trade, Ghana's Ministry of Trade, and the Ministry of Business Development, together with the Entrepreneurs Foundation of Ghana, awarded Ghana's number one corn man, Froster, Nanapia Mensa, CEO of Men's Gold, as the best business executive for 2017. Wow. Here again, you can see the award on the screen. Second time, I don't know if you can show them the picture. And so, you see, these are all awards which were backed by the state. 
in spite of the fact that government knew that this men's group and this CEO were subject of investigation. They didn't think about the ordinary Ghanaian. They didn't think about the unsuspecting Ghanaian out there. They chose to endorse and award number one and men's group. Then we have given you the evidence to that. Number three, the NDC cannot also forget the now infamous visit of number one to the presidency with his close pal and close confidant of President Tepukwado, Kwesi Nyantechi of number 12 faith. Government claimed that number one was included in the said delegation because he had indicated or expressed an intention to sponsor Ghana's Football League is an afterthought and a poor attempt at defending the indefensible. The said allegation, or the said delegation, sorry, was made up of CAF and GFA officials. You know this rule. Number one, we know, has never been an official of any of these bodies. The fact that he had expressed an intention to sponsor Ghana Football League didn't make him an official of GFA or CAF. Ordinarily, he had no business joining that delegation. And our president had no business meeting with him. Ladies and gentlemen, when in this country have you seen any president of this country meeting with sponsors or potential? He was not even a sponsor at the time. He was a potential sponsor. Because we are told by government that four days earlier, and before that visit, he had only expressed his intention you know, to sponsor the league. But when in this country have you seen President Kofor or President Mills or President Mahama or J.J. Rollins meeting with potential sponsors of Ghana's football league. It is not the, 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 the job of the president to be doing that. So he had no business meeting him in the first place. But not just that. The outcome of the meeting, which was highly publicized for months, without correction from the presidency, further deepened confidence in the activities of men's group and would unsuspecting Ghanaians to invest or keep their investments with men's gold. So ladies and gentlemen, what we are saying is that the decision of our president to meet with number one was unjustifiable and a poor exercise of judgment. Ladies and gentlemen, to buttress this point, after the meeting with the president, Number one took a picture with the president and subsequently shared it on his Facebook wall, accompanied with a caption, I quote, Mr. President, we owe it all to you. My brother, this is not the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for his, his, his post on the Facebook wall for everyone to see. You see, the MPP over the past week has sought to create the impression that we are only taking issues with the fact that Namwan took a picture with the president. So they say, oh, Namwan also took a picture with this traditional leader. He took a picture with this religious leader. Comrades. With this religious leader. Comrades, ladies and gentlemen of the press, brothers and sisters, that argument is inconsequential. The said traditional authorities, the said religious authorities do not have the BNI, do not have the national security, they do not have, you know, the apparatus of state to inform them or to have informed them about the illegal activities of number one and men's So they can be excused. But the president who has national security, who is actually the commander in chief of Ghana Armed Forces, cannot have any excuse when it comes to this. But our bone of concession and our beef. It's not about the picture per se, but like as I've demonstrated to you, about the comments which accompany the picture and what the picture was used for by Namwan. Mr. President, we owe all to you, I repeat. What did Namwan mean by this statement, ladies and gentlemen? Obviously, he was ascribing his successes to President Ekufuado. You know this so. all in an effort to enhance his credibility and legitimacy. Although government knew at all times that Namwan was engaged in illegal business and was a subject of investigation, government was not bothered 
I repeat, the government was not bothered to issue a disclaimer to distance the president, our president, from this obvious act of advertisement. Ladies and gentlemen, as a result and in effect, but unfortunately, see, when the regulatory institutions such as the Bank of Ghana and SEC were saying no to number one, our president, Nanado Danko Ekufuado, was saying thumbs up to him. <coughs> government simply refused to sink from the same hymn page and succeeded in confusing and encouraging unsuspecting Ghanaians to deal with men's gold. Number four, even though he, as in Namwan, was a subject of investigation and had been pronounced by the central bank as a person engaged in illegal business, the state looked on while Namwan sponsored Ghana's football league without any objection. Yes, they will say that, oh, the GFA is a private party. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to Ghana football, it is not a private affair. And that is why the state always has a stake in the sponsorship of Ghana's football. So, at least our government, our president, government officials who we pay with our taxpayers, with our, you know, taxes, sorry, to protect us from crime, should have at least raised objections with the sponsorship of Ghana's Football League by Nam One, knowing very well that he was a subject of investigations by Central Bank. However, that did not happen. And so that enhanced the visibility and legitimacy of Nam One and his businesses. Again, during the national tour of Nam Vision, Nam Mission, sorry, the Minister of Tourism, Honorable Catherine Afiku, after taking inspiration from her boss, President Akufuado, was seen chaperoning Nam One throughout the Western region, ostensibly to create tourism awareness. This, ladies and gentlemen, was another open state endorsement and ministerial advertisement of the beleaguered CEO of Men's Good which enhanced his popularity, legitimacy, and credibility. Again, friends from the media, would like to submit to you, and this is the interesting part, that the wife of President Ekufuwa, Ghana's first lady, also took active part in the endorsement and promotion of Namwa. In March 2018, a foundation, the Rebecca Foundation, partnered with Nam Mission, another company belonging to the belated Mesgo CEO, in connection with a medical outreach program in some parts of the country. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many NGOs and so many humanitarian organizations in Ghana and in the world. Amongst all of them, our First Lady Antibiki could not find any reputable, any credible agency to partner with. They rather chose to partner with the man, Nana Pia Mensa, Ghana's number one foster. If this had happened under the government of President Mahama, what would our brothers and sisters in the MPP say? What would they have said? Where in this country, when the DKM matter arose, even though President Mahama and his wife never knew the owners of DKM, even though they never had meetings with them at the seat of government, even though they never took pictures with the owners, even though the owners never posted pictures with them, ascribing their successes to them on social media, even though their officials never took the owners of God's life, DKM, on tours and so on, our brothers in the MPP, because they have lies in their DNA, lied against them, that DKM belong to them. Today we know how the passage of time has exposed these lies, these wicked lies of the MPP. When you go to Sunyane today, a story building just sitting opposite the Sunyane Coronation Park, which was owned by DKM, has been bought by one phaser, bodyguard of Honorable Asoma Chreme, Minister for lands and natural resources. 
how can a body guard? That muscular man who won't garner um, strongest or so, get that amount of money to buy the third story building. Their own vice chairman, Abronye, came out and indicated that it was Asuma Chene, who was then the regional minister, who had actually purchased this building. The matter went to court, and the court has reversed that decision. The question I would ask Honorable Asuma Chene when I did this, whether he bought that building from Lodina Mahama or John Mahama, since they said in opposition that BKM belongs to them. Today, Today, you go to in Kwanza, there is another radio station there called Dero FM, which has also been bought by the actually the general manager of God is last in Techiman and the Kentampo area. He's been awarded with an appointment, and he is a representative of the president there. And yet, you have seen this for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. This is not politics as usual. We are not seeking to rip political capital from this exercise. We are speaking as Ghanaians who are concerned about the plight of the ordinary, you know, and the grieving cost, uh, uh, customers of men's gold. We are speaking as the only true national mass political party in Ghana who care about the plight of men's gold customers. And it is for Ghanaians to judge whether this government was worthy and deserving of the mandate we gave them on 7 December 2016. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me continue and state that it is mind-boggling that among all the humanitarian agencies in Ghana and the world, it was number one, a foster that our first lady chose to partner with. Again, it is worthy of note that in the last two years, Nana Pia Mensa has enjoyed full state honors, as we have seen him with armed police escorts at public gatherings on countless occasions. We'll show you some pictures very soon. Well, show me the pictures before the video. Show me the pictures before the video. Ladies and gentlemen, not even members of parliament and ministers of state enjoy the kind of security detail that was accorded number one by this government. Just look at it. Look at their helmets. Look at their accoutrements they are welding. Are they going to war? Do you even see such armed police escort with our vice president or president? Yet, this was a man. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very serious matter. You see, where in the world have you seen a man who is under investigation by the central bank and who has been declared by the central bank as engaging in legal business, being given these privileges. 2017, Men's Bank ending with a K. And Men's Bank ending with a C. Were small schemes and quite unknown. This entity later became Men's Gold with several wings under this government. As a result of official state enablement, the clientele base of the company grew exponentially within the last two years. Information available to us, ladies and gentlemen of the press, suggests that the company acquired about 90% of its current clientele between 2017 and 2018. And this fact has been corroborated by the customers and staff of Men's Gold. I have the press statement of the, cost of the staff of Men's Gold with me here. If you doubt this, after the press conference, you can see me, I'll do, give you a free copy, where the staff of Men's Gold themselves, led by their corporate affairs manager, makes the point that these acts of government, this is not something coming from the NDC, this is the corporate affairs manager of Men's Gold, saying that these acts of endorsement, advertisement, and promotion by the state led to an exponential expansion in their clientele base. So when you see some of our brothers from the NPC saying that, oh, men go started during the NDC, and ask them that during the NDC, did you see number one driving private jets in Ghana? Did you see the state 
faith institutions rolling red carpets for him to walk on like they did for him when he went to Kumasi? Did you see Namwan's flashing cash all around the country like we, we, we've seen him under this government? No. You see, celebrity endorsements of a particular business or product has a positive correlation with the fortunes of that business. We all recall how in 2009, advertising experts revealed that Barack Obama's public declaration of affection for his BlackBerry phone indirectly provided BlackBerry with free publicity worth 33 million pounds sterling. Barack Obama never uttered a word about his phone. He only showed his phone in public, exhibited it and all that. Then advertising agents came out in the United States of America, told us that that provided BlackBerry with free publicity worth more than 33 million pounds sterling. So President Kufuado and his government officials need not or did they have to tell Ghanaians expressly that go and put your monies or invest with men's gold? No. The fact is that many of the grieving customers of men's gold invested in the company because of the open endorsement of Nam One and men's gold by the Akufuado government. They trusted men's gold because they trusted the president and his appointees. Therefore, government cannot absolve itself from responsibility in this matter. And that closes the first leg of our statement. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we would like at this stage to address the closure of men's gold and government's irresponsible conduct in the aftermath. This is what is even you know, sad in this whole discussion. First, from the media. How did this government close down the activities of men's gold? And how has it managed the aftermath thereof? Did they have the investment of the customers in mind? Or their main preoccupation was to offer number one safe passage to diffuse and dissipate his wealth so that customers cannot trace such wealth even when they secure court judgments to recover their losses. We have been told that the object of government's intervention was to protect the customers, you know, be so, and their investments. But before the closure of the company, we would want to ask did the government conduct an audit of the assets and liabilities of men's gold? Did the government track the accounts and assets of the company, its directors and shareholders, both locally and internationally, to decide on how to retrieve the investments of customers? Ladies and gentlemen, this government's lack of diligence and foresight was manifestly clear in the absence of a roadmap to help customers get their monies back. The untidy approach adopted by government contradicts the purpose and essence of government intervention and has only aggravated and worsened the plight of the many suffering clients of men's gold. Ladies and gentlemen, government's posturing in the aftermath of the closure of men's gold is even more bizarre and confirms its complicity in this whole